Shrubs are probably the most neglected plant group in habitat management. Wildflowers get all the glory for drawing pollinators. Trees get all the credit for being an ecological choice and shrubs just get forgot about. But they are a vitally important group for a wide range of animals. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology and today I'm going to tell you about five native shrubs that bloom in the heat of summer providing nectar and pollen for pollinators, cover for many other animals, and even winter food for wildlife. Number one, winged or shining sumac, Rus copilinum. Winged sumac is a colony forming shrub that can form dense thickets and provides excellent cover for birds, small mammals, and deer. Due to its suckering habit, winged sumac is not a good choice for small spaces unless you are willing to deal with the suckers and is best utilized in cover thickets. Winged sumac has a large range in the eastern U.S. Pyramid-shaped clusters of small greenish-white flowers are numerous in mid to late summer and attract a wide range of native bees, honeybees, butterflies, and moths. It is a host plant for numerous butterfly and moth species, including the impressive regal moth, the hollow twigs provide nesting structure for several species of native bees. The fruit of the winged sumac is a small red berry which form in large, highly visible clusters that persist into the winter. The berries are eaten by a range of song and game birds, small mammals, and even deer. Deer will browse winged sumac foliage and rabbits will utilize the bark and twigs in winter. An added bonus of winged sumac is stellar bright red foliage in fall. Number two. Shrubby St. John's wort, Hypericum prolificum. Shrubby St. John's wort has a native range that covers most of the eastern U.S. and is a non-thicket forming shrub, which makes it a great choice for landscape plantings. The showy, long stamened yellow flowers appear in midsummer and will continue for about two months. When in bloom, shrubby St. John's wort is a mound of bright yellow. Bumblebees are especially attracted to the flowers, as are numerous other native bees and honeybees. The flowers do not produce nectar, but are an excellent source of pollen. Deer and rabbits generally leave shrubby St. John's wort alone, another plus for a landscape plant, or for wildlife cover thickets in areas with a high deer population. The bark exfoliates and adds visual interest in winter after the leaves drop. Overall, shrubby St. John's wort is a beautiful shrub that is about as easy as it gets to grow and is a great choice for wildlife plantings or pollinator gardens. If you're finding the information in this video useful, please pollinate that like button. Number three, buttonbush, Cephalanthus occidentalis. Buttonbush is found along lake shores, swamps, rivers, and other wetlands across the eastern U.S. Although it occurs naturally in moist soils, it can be grown in drier locations if adequate moisture is provided. It has a long bloom period and its white ball-shaped flowers are attractive to a wide range of pollinators including native bees, honeybees, butterflies, moths, wasps, flies, and even hummingbirds. A button bush in full bloom will have a cloud of pollinators around it. It is also a host plant for several moths, including the awesome Promethea moth. The ball-shaped flowers turn into a ball-shaped seed cluster in late fall. The seeds are eaten by a wide range of birds, including waterfowl. Button bush provides excellent cover and is used as nesting cover by some species of songbirds and when growing in flooded conditions is excellent escape cover for waterfowl broods. Deer and rabbits generally leave it alone. Buttonbush is definitely worth the extra water it may need in a pollinator garden and is a superb choice for wildlife plantings and moist soil situations. If you would like to learn more about attracting pollinators to your yard, please check out this book, Attract Pollinators and Wildlife to Your Yard, 15 Free and Easy Ways by my wife, Shannon Tromboli. It's available directly from us on our website the link is in the description. Number four, sweet pepper bush, Clethra ulnifolia. Sweet pepper bush is a multi-stemmed, clump-forming shrub native to the East Coast and Gulf Coast states, although it does well outside of its native range. I do not recommend planting it in large-scale wildlife plantings or thickets outside of its native range, but it does make a nice specimen plant in a pollinator garden. The large spikes of white flowers are attractive to native bees, honeybees, butterflies, moths, and hummingbirds. In the late summer and early fall, the flower spikes become spikes of seed capsules that are eaten by many species of birds and small mammals. Deer rarely, if ever, bother sweet pepper bush. This is one of the few native flowering shrubs that has been adopted by the horticulture industry, making it fairly easy to find. 
Just be sure that any cultivar or nativar, as they are sometimes called, has wild type flowers and foliage to ensure maximum usage by pollinators. Number five, Devil's Walking Stick, Aurelia spinosa. Devil's Walking Stick is an absolutely strange, tropical looking, single trunked, rarely branched shrub that spreads from root suckers to form thickets. This is not a shrub for a small space. It is found mainly in the southeast and extends into the New England states. Although the trunk is covered in spines, this is one of my favorite native shrubs. It blooms late in the season with large clusters of small white flowers and is a favorite of native bees, honeybees, wasp, butterflies, and moths. You will often hear a flowering patch of Devil's Walking Stick before you see it. Devil's Walking Stick is a total late season pollinator magnet. In the fall, the flower clusters are replaced with dark purple to black berries. The berries are eaten by songbirds, game birds, small mammals, and black bears. Deer are fond of Devil's Walking Stick and it rates as a moderate to high preference browse. In addition, bucks seem to love rubbing on the spine covered trunks, especially when rubbing off velvet. A few fun facts about Devil's Walking Stick. Its bipinnately compound leaves are huge, up to four feet long, and are the largest leaves of any plant in North America. It is also in the same family as ginseng. And finally, be aware that contact with the bark and roots can cause a contact dermatitis in some people. Devil's Walking Stick is an excellent choice for planting in wildlife thickets, especially in partially shaded areas that have been disturbed, such as by fire or logging. A super cool plant that is used by a wide range of wild critters. So there you have it. Five native shrubs that bloom in the heat of summer and provide a wealth of vital resources to a wide range of animals. If you would like to learn more about native shrubs, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.